A 14-month-old baby died of coronavirus disease in the Jamnanagar district of Gujarat on Tuesday after testing positive on April 5th. And this is very unfortunate, of course, and it's also very rare because coronavirus disease usually doesn't cause very severe illness in young children and in adolescents and teenagers. So if you look at data from countries like China, United States and Italy, uh, where, uh, which are in more advanced stages of the epidemic, you'll find that mostly young children, teenagers and young adults are not really affected. So what does this mean? Because if you really look at data from India, it shows that about 9% of the infections in India so far have been in the 0 to 20 year age group and about 42% have been in the 21 years to 40 years age group, which essentially means that 53% of the infections in India so far have been in people under 40. And this is the data that was released by the Ministry of Health on Saturday about three, four days ago. So does this mean that young India is at higher risk of infection compared to the rest of the world? And what is it that's putting our people at higher risk? Because this would be really worrying for India where the median age is 29 years, so India is essentially a very young country. And if you look at the median age in India, which is 29, and you compare it to the US, in the US it's, uh, the median age is 38.2, in China the average age of the population is 38.4, and Italy it's, it's much higher, it's 45.7. So if younger people are getting infected, it would be really something to look into, because that would mean a lot of us, a lot of young people would be at higher risk of infection. But what experts and epidemiologists say that uh, the uh, infection is showing up more in younger people is because there's a testing bias. India is still testing people who have had a history of foreign travel and their contact. So these were people who traveled abroad. A lot of them were young students who were coming back after the universities closed down abroad. A lot of them were working professionals who had traveled for work, some people had traveled for holidays, so most of them were young adults who were mobile and now when they came home then uh, and unknowingly infected their friends and family and from there the infection spread. So right now because infection is largely limited to people who traveled abroad and their close contacts, uh, that, that's the reason why it's still largely focused on people who are young. And uh, in, over the next uh, couple of weeks, we're going to see a shift in the demographic. We're going to see a shift in the age distribution, which is already happening in other countries as the pandemic advances. So like initially in China, the data from the first 44,000 infections in Wuhan and other provinces in China showed that la uh, most of the people who were infected were over 60 years old. Now this was because China then was just testing people who had uh, who were hospitalized with the disease but more recent data from China shows that young people and children also get infected it's just that they were not getting tested earlier because they had mild symptoms or no symptoms at all and even the US Centers for Disease Control found that 20 to 44 year olds accounted for 20 percent of the hospitalizations and 12 percent for ICU admissions so a lot of them also need hospitalization, but younger people are more likely to survive the disease. They're likely to have milder symptoms as compared to older symptoms. Uh, and more recent data from the US, which is just two days old, showed that in, in, the, in the United States, 1.7% uh, of the infections were in children. But they also found that only 73% of those children showed symptoms compared to close to 93% of adults who had symptoms of fever, breathlessness, cough, and uh, difficulty breathing. And among the children, again, only 5.7% needed hospitalization as compared to 10% uh, adults. And when I'm talking about adults, I'm talking about people under 65 and not really old people because their hospital admissions would be much, much higher. So what does this mean for us? It means that, yes, children don't have severe disease, Children have milder symptoms, so we don't really need to worry, but we still need to protect them from infections. So wearing masks would be important. Social isolation would still be important. And we must remember that while children may not develop the disease, they are still carriers of the infection. So they can take the disease to older people who would be at risk of hospitalization and death. So we have to be careful with children around 
and ensure that they stay protected and we have to also ensure that older people in our homes stay protected so that we can uh, we have fewer hospitalizations and fewer deaths so guys again stay home stay safe